Hello everyone. Let's study well today. Plants grow well in sunny areas with elongated stems and more leaves. Now, this is a picture of the potato field and the potato leaves seen from above. Look at the plants in the sun and discuss what you noticed. The whole potato is well exposed to sunlight and is growing well. There is nothing in the field that blocks the sunlight. The leaves are spreading and the sunlight is getting better. The leaves are facing different directions. Because of that, they are easily exposed to sunlight. I agree. So why do you think plants grow when exposed to sunlight? Let's think about it and keep in mind the contents of plant germination and growth that we learned in the fifth grade. I needed starch in the seeds to germinate. I think that starch is necessary for plant growth as well as germination. I think starch is formed when exposed to sunlight. The potato leaves are well exposed to sunlight. When the leaves are exposed to sunlight, I wonder if the starch necessary for growth can be produced on the leaves. Let's make this a problem. Will the leaves of a plant produce starch when exposed to sunlight? If you write a problem, let's make a hypothesis. Let's listen to their opinion. Germination requires starch in the seeds, after which it grows without starch. So, I think that starch will be formed on the leaves exposed to sunlight. But is it really the leaves that make starch? I also want to find out if there is no starch on the leaves that are not exposed to sunlight. So, how do you find out? We want to find out if starch is formed on the leaves. It is good to compare the leaves that have been exposed to sunlight with those that have not been exposed to sunlight. We can check if there is starch on the leaves by using iodine solution. You used iodine solution when you were in the fifth grade. If you add iodine solution to something that contains starch, it will turn blue and purple. Then what kind of experiment should we do? How about wrapping it in an aluminum foil? I would like to compare the leaves which were exposed to the sun with those that were not. With that alone, I don't know if the leaves contain starch before they are exposed to sunlight. Before it gets in the sun, you have to make sure it's free of starch. If so, it's a good idea to make sure there is no starch before the sun is shining, and then compare the sunlit and non-sunlighted leaves. Now, let's compare the three patterns using potato leaves. In A, is there starch on the leaves before they are exposed to sunlight? In B, will the leaves produce starch when exposed to sunlight? In C, will the leaves produce starch in the absence of sunlight? It is better to choose young leaves over old and large leaves. Use the same leaves as much as possible to meet the conditions. Oh, there are cuts in the leaves. At this time, make different cuts in the leaves of B and C so that you can distinguish them later. And to keep some leaves out of the sun, cover the potato leaves with aluminum foil and leave overnight. The next morning, take the leaves of A and see the reaction with iodine solution. For B, remove the aluminum foil and let it be exposed to sunlight. Leave C covered with aluminum foil. After 4 or 5 hours, remove the leaves of B and C and check for starch as in A then, it is an experiment using iodine solution. First, take the leaves. 
Next, simmer for a few minutes on low heat to make it easier for the iodine solution to soak into the leaves. Let's not lose its shape after passing. At this time, wear protective goggles to prevent hot water and chemicals from getting into your eyes. Also, since the heated equipment is hot, do not touch it until it cools down. After boiling, wash with water to thoroughly remove the oil from the leaves. It is also to cool the leaves because the iodine solution does not react accurately at high temperatures. Finally, add iodine solution and watch the reaction. As you can see the reaction, use iodine solution that is as strong as black tea. If the chemical gets on your hands, wash it well. So what kind of equipment do you need? Potato stock, aluminum foil, oil-based pen, scissors, chopsticks, beaker, stove, gas cylinder, wire mesh, wet towel, protective goggles, petri dish, iodine solution, dropper, tray, tissue. Let's write this down in your notebook. Let's check the experimental results. Here are the results of E. How about these? Only the leaves of B have changed to a blue-purple color. A leaf in C leaf had no starch, but B leaf had starch. Let's discuss what we can say about the results. From the results of B, it was confirmed that starch is formed when the leaves are exposed to sunlight. I didn't have starch. Where did the starch made yesterday go? I wonder if the leaves disappeared during the night. Just as starch is used when germinating and growing, I wonder if starch was used to make new leaves and grow the sardines. Let's conclude. What can you say? When exposed to sunlight, starch is formed on the leaves and it will grow on the nutrient. I agree. When the leaves of a plant are exposed to sunlight, starch is formed on them. From the fact that starch is used for germination and growth, which I learned in the fifth grade, it can be said that the nutrients produced in the leaves are used for the growth of plants. Now, let's write this down in your notebook. Starch is transported and used throughout the plant's body as a nutrient for the growth of the plant. However, starch cannot move through the plant's body in its original form. Therefore, it was changed to something called, sugar, that dissolves in water at night. It is carried through the wood to each part of the plant's body. The reason why the iodine solution does not react easily even when examining the stem is that starch is sugar. Sugar is carried to various parts of the body and used as a nutrient for growth, and is also converted into starch and stored in fruits, seeds, and potatoes. When iodine solution is applied to the cut end of potatoes, it turns bluish-purple. Here is a view of potato starch dyed in bluish-purple at 40 times, 100 times, and 400 times under a microscope. This is the end of this class. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching.